I remember when I was a little boy, when I was only about six or seven years of age, and my father used to bring my sister, two sisters and myself up and we used to pick up along out that uh, mountain out there, Stooling was always a good spot for frockens. Now this area here wasn't great for frockens, but uh, up Stooling I was picking them up at the place called the Lodge and uh, another place down by Sleeve Gar River called the Curragh and also on a rock up over Kiltheely and it's Corandoya rock. And that's all planted now so that you would get no frockens. But in this area here as well, there was frockens all right, but it's a lot of trees are solid being planted, so a lot of the frockens are gone now, like, you know. And that time, frockens was a great price in around 1947 or that. It was a pound of stone. And a pound of stone was big money because that time, working with the farmer that time, was only about two pounds a week. Now, when we were small, we wouldn't pick much. I'd pick five pounds in the day, maybe, less than a half stone. But um, my father was a good picker and he'd pick a stone. So that was big money. And all the people used to um, come and pick on, on uh, an out knock row, out at that mountain as well. And in the evening when they were finished picking, the Dordans lorry used to come from in the Scarty. And the pickers would go down and they'd meet him in Sleeve Gar and they'd take all the frockings. Uh, they used to put him in a little wooden chips that time. And uh, they like the chips that you see sometimes in mushrooms, but they're little wood chips now, not, not plastic. And uh, they'd be all gathered up and they'd meet there in, in the evening. But uh, everyone, all school children was up picking on the mountain. But they're all dead now. I mean, I was, I'm 80 now, so I was only six at that, that time. So the frocking pickers are gone. But they only lasted for a short time. Uh, it was after the war. See, the war finished in 45. Now, I don't know how long they were picking before that, but that's as long as I can remember them when they were picking them. So, I do remember back picking them in 47 and 48. I can remember going home one evening and there was after being a baby born in the house, my brother John. And uh, so that was in 40, 48. That's, 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 that's uh, 48, he was born, and it was uh, the t 30th of July, 48. That's how I know that was the peak of the frockings that time. It's a little bit early here for the frockings yet, like. But um, when the frockings would no, just pick them in sweet cans we used to have. The hard-boiled sweets used to come in, in cans. We used to have them or the cans we had. And... Uh, I often remember one day we were going home, myself and my two sisters were running down the mountain and we fell and the frockings all went down into the heather. Gone, the whole lot of them. Uh, you couldn't get them up out of it, like, you know, so there we And I remember another day, we were only very small, and we went home and we were picking. My father had been gone away, he'd gone to, he was working, it'd be a land in there. And uh, he'd leave us picking and he'd come back for us in the evening there. But this evening we fell out, we sort of anyhow, we plastered our faces with frockings. My sister Cathy, that's Cathy Webner now, and we blackened our face so ready, murdered, like, because the frockings was all gone. We <laughs> messed them, you know, for children to do. But um, that time the frockings was a great, you know, you had the money for the frockings for to buy boots for your feet at that time, for, well, for the feet, and <laughs> going to school. <laughs> but, uh, and when the frockings finished, they finished up in the middle of August, uh, the blackberry came in then. And everyone was picking the blackberries. I remember all the uh, ones around, all the children picking the blackberries. And they were about half a crown a stone, I think. Two and six pounds at that time. But uh, it was great. But I remember old people, well, we thought they were old people, so they were only about 
40 years of age and 30 peaking. And they're not old now. <laughs> but, uh, and the, some of them are a bit cooking. They used to bring a little tommy can there and they'd boil up the water in a tommy can. They'd have a couple of stones, they'd put them together and they'd get a few bits of old heather and stuff and lay it on there and they'd make the tea. We never had tea much. We used to bring uh, a bit of bread and we'd have milk. We'd have milk with us in a bottle with a paper cork in it. And by evening, have you gone sour? And that's, <laughs> that's what it was. But it was great though, the picking, because there was big crowds of people there. There was a, a bit of a poem I, I never knew, I knew a couple of lines of it. It said about the course of July, this very coming year, all the tramps from all over Ireland to Coonog did steer. The Buntlody barbers were the first to come there and left their proud scissors all covered in hair. Now that's the only behavior I knew, but there was a lot more of it. You might be able to find out about it. But, and that was, they were picking in Coonog Wood. That's um, on the road between Kiltaley and Ballamurphy. It's planted now as well. But that was a great place for frockings. And there was a lot of people who used to pick frockings there. So it, it, was, it was a great time, like, you know, and it was good and healthy. And that time, when we used to pick most of the time was out place called the Lodge, which is up up at the uh, up over Kilhealy there, and we, all the people used to cut tough that time. My father and I would be cutting tough, so he'd be, go off and he might be cutting the tough, and getting it dried, cocking it up, and all that, and we'd be picking the frockings. So there was great industry going on in the mountains that time, you know. And your father cut tough. Oh, we cut the tough. We cut tough, and. Uh, uh, it, it was the peat sort of thing. We cut that on the mountains. The, and them bogs back down here now, there was good turf in it, right? But the, we cut everyone around the mountain that time. They had mountain rights. There was a lot of people. There's um, different towns' lands, and there's the town land of Clorogmore now, there's a mountain rights on it of, I think, 650 acres. So you could cut turf on that any place. Now, that's all stopped as well now. You can't cut turf. And then there was Clorog Big, there was Ballard Crystal, and there was Monia, which was up there. For the, and they were cutting the tough in Monia now that time that I'm talking about. Well, that time, money was very scarce, but it was an extra income for us. We, a big family of us in it, like, you know, and this money was great because really on that time there wasn't good money for cattle, sheep or nothing. It was just after the war and money was scarce, but this was a big help to us. And so we had the frockings, we had the, the blackberries, and also that time there was a lot of hunting of rabbits later on in the year. That used to be into November and that. But the money was great the, because uh, blackberries, there was plenty of blackberries, and there's not so much blackberries now because the hedges are all gone and the hedge trimmers doing away with all the blackberry, the, the, the briars and that. And there was one field near us at home and it was all briars and there was loads of blackberries in it. And uh, so between the frockings, the blackberries and the rabbits, it was great that time. You know, it was all, but there's none of that now. You have, you have no one picking frockings. Well, the frockings are not good anyhow like now. And, uh, to pick, to pick a stone of them in the day, it had to be picking very fast. And we used to come that time, you get up in the morning and come, we come about six o'clock in the morning to the mountain, you know, and we were only little small lads. When I think about it now, just think of uh, children coming around seven and eight, nine and 10 years of age, going to the mountain at six o'clock in the morning and we'd pick. And they see they had to finish up again four o'clock at that because the lorry would be coming for them. And it was Dordans from Inniscorty. They had this big lorry we thought at the time. It was only tiny oak now, like, you know. And they'd collect it there, and then they'd go on to Coon Oak. But, um, and would you pick a stone in a day? I would, no, a, a, a good picker, grown up picker, I'd pick a stone. We'd only pick about five or six pounds now, children, like, you know, but that, that was all right too. That'd be make 10 shillings in the day, which, which was goodly. 
but they're, they're terrible small, and you get tired of them. And uh, then there was the problem of uh, the bloody covered in ticks, and now if you get ticks, you get these Lyme disease, <laughs> and I, a series. I don't know how nothing happened to us. It must be a different type of tick or something. But the, if you were down in the in the, the bushes there going along in the rockings, there'd be a lot of ticks on you. But, uh, and you know when you'd pick your little bucket and your father would pick a bigger bucket, would you all put them all into one big bucket? It was all put into his and he'd go off down down to Sleeve Guard, down, down to near uh, Sleeve Guard, that's where they used to come to. And he'd take the whole lot of them into one bucket. And a lot of the time we used to have a, a little um, tins that were made up. You know, the, the travelling, the tinsmiths used to go around that time and you'd get an old tin and they'd put a handle in it and you'd have them little mugs and we'd pick them in that and we'd throw them into a bigger one. And we used to have the, the sweet can as well, like that I was saying that the, the boiled sweets came in. And there was no plastic buckets, there was no nothing. There was no protective clothing there, there was not no clothes on it. So when the shower rain came, you got drowned because the clothes we had wouldn't keep out nothing, and the short trousers on us, and, but uh, it's completely different now. But uh, of course, children can't. You couldn't put children out to pick frockings now. It's against the law. So. <laughs> and we're talking late, mid to late forties. Yeah. Well, I can remember th that was after the war. It was forty four. I, I was I was born in thirty nine. So I was a little lad, I was big enough to be able to pick them little berries like, you know. So I was picking them from around 45, 46, 47, 48, them years. And I don't know how long it went on for. I wouldn't say it went into the 50s. I, I can't remember, but I do remember that when we finished the frockings, we went on the blackberry. And you know when you'd be picking them, you were born, what was your town's land? Cloroag, was it? I came from the town's land of Clorog Moor, that's how it is. Ah, goes Clorog Moor. But that town's land goes right up to the television mast up there, Clorog Moor, the, the boundary, the, the mountain rights and all goes up that far. But we picked up on Stooline and that other place I was talking about down at Slivgar River, the Corrug, that was a part of Clorog and Kiltili hills there. And there was plenty of frocking trees there that time. And before You'd ever pick a frock and you'd have to walk a mile in. Oh, we'd hill. walk, we'd, we'd walk, we'd have to walk over, over a mile. The nearest place now, Tullon, we used to pick on Tullon. We also cut tough on Tullon. That's the mountain up there, little mountain up over Kiltili, Tullon. But there would be frockings up along the side of that. There was always, you get a good patch of uh, frockings, you know, in certain places. Then where the heather is too high, you can't pick them over it. It's hard to pick them in high heather. And uh, it's only where it's after being burdened off and the frogging trees come up. That's, that's a good spot to pick them, you know, in a couple of years after. Like, you know, you wouldn't have frogging in there for a few years after. But uh, we'd have to walk. And to walk up to Stooley in there now was a good walk. Like, you know, it was a heavy walk up the hill. But there was... For six or seven year old? Your, yeah, yeah, I w and up along, like it was up, sort of to finish up, sort of was up to maybe nine and ten, like for, for, I was a big lad that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And your father then would leave, go up to Sleeve Gar. That's between Kiltili and Valley Murphy. Yes, that's the the road there. It's near the the, the border. It's, it's where the river comes down. That that's the boundary river between Carlow and uh, Wexford. And there's a meeting point there, so. The ones that come up there, they blow the hard and come along there and all the ones that gather up what they have and go on down with them. I don't know whether they had to go with them every day, they didn't keep that well I think or something, I don't know. But sometimes we'd bring some of them home because if uh, we'd pick on the way home sometimes and to, we'd have, my father wouldn't be with us sometimes and we'd bring them home them days. So I don't know what happened to them but I'm, I'm sure they were sold anyhow like, you know. And, 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 and come here, how big would it, like, can you remember what a stone would even look like? Because it's, it's hard to, would it be a... A stone? How would you, your father even carry it, like, over to Sleeve Gar? Oh, sure, it'd be nothing. 
Not nothing to him, like you know, yeah. nothing. A, a stone way have a, sure had only be about a. It wouldn't be a cubic foot. A stone, a stone. I'd say to be a cubic foot. No, it wouldn't. It'd be, it'd be only. You put a stone in a in a fair sized bucket, like a middling sized bucket. You'd have a stone in it, and if you, uh, that that that'd be a lot. And what were, what were they used for, can you remember? I don't really know. They used to say they were used for dye. Now, that was all after the war, and everything was scarce. And uh, it's like the blackberries. I never knew what to use the blackberries for. They said they used to make dye them. They definitely didn't eat them because there was maggots and everything in them, the ones that we picked. <laughs> we, we, we were the same. We picked them up until the early, mid-80s as the children in Belly Garrett. Oh, yeah, but you'd be only picking them for jamming that, I'd say. We were picking up for the Blackberry Man as well. Oh, yeah. The man from Minnesota came out. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you have Dobbs? Was there Dobbs, yes, Dobbs, yeah. yeah. There was Leo Dobbs and there was, yeah, yeah there was Dobbs, yeah. But um, well, I didn't pick the Blackberries. Oh no, I, I was out walking in the 60s. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, he came to us, we picked them, and a good few neighbours in Valley Garth would have picked them up into the mid 80s. Yeah. Now we were only chaps going out with buckets picking them, yeah. yeah. I remember Granny picking them, filling a big barrel for him. He'd come on a Saturday. That's right, he'd, yeah. Uh, oh, we used to pick them at... The scales are hanging out the van. Yeah. yeah. We, we picked them, the, the blackberries, and uh, the corn, picking around the dishes, and they'd be cutting the corn that time as well, because they were cutting the corn with, with the binder, horse and binder and that. But around the dishes, the corn fields, there's always good broyers and good blackberries. But... Uh, it, w I like picking the blackberries, they are like you get your hands torn and all that, but these frockings is a pain that. <laughs> yeah. And when you were catching the rabbits, Jim, the next st next phase of the money, what were you snaring rabbits or shooting them? My father had a, a spotlight, uh, he had a six volt battery, a car battery, he used to carry in a big square biscuit tin. The biscuits came years ago in a big square tin. And he'd used to put the car battery, big batteries that time, because the, and he'd have the battery on his back. He had uh, tires of a bike onto it, make a rucksack out with this biscuit in that battery on his back, and a spotlight. And we had a, a sheep dog and a half hound. And they were able to catch the rabbits, and they'd have the spotlight on them, and it was great. The spotlight wouldn't light up the whole field. And the half hound we had was good now. And she'd go out in the dark and she'd just come in on the spot, shoo in on it, like, you know. And you could get 40 rabbits in the night with, with, with dogs. And I know a lot of people around used to do the, after the rabbits that time. Farmers and everyone after rabbits. And I remember as well, and I was only 10 years of age with my father. And one night from uh, it's about seven o'clock till one o'clock, in the morning, we got 72 rabbits. That's the highest I ever remember. And the rabbits was good money that time. Well, that might be later on now than the frockings. But there was um, there were half a crown of rabbit at one stage, which was good money that time. And everyone, we were reared on rabbits. And I tell you, we didn't get the good ones there. We got the ones that was damaged that they, that they couldn't sell. <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, they were lovely meat, the rabbit, boiled and fried was lovely, it was as nice as chicken. And all the young people was after rabbits. And now some of the people used to snare, and I was able to set the snares myself as well, and set snares and cut rabbits with them as well. And every young lad was able to set a snare, but all the young lads was out with dogs and lamps and... So it was a good income, like, you know. And that went on for years till the myxomatosis came. And after that, that finished all that. You know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat a rabbit now after seeing that. But we hunted them up to the time the myxomatosis came. But uh, it was, I suppose it was handy money for people. It wasn't handy because uh, then people used to go and work the next day. And after the rabbits, you couldn't go out hunting when the, the moon dive was there. You had to go when the, there was no moon. You go in the dark. And sometimes you get up in the morning, the moon wouldn't be gone down till maybe four o'clock. And you could get up and go on hunting then after that. And you also had to hunt 
against the wind. You know, because if, if you go with the wind, they'll hear you coming with the noise and that's so always went against the wind. So there was a bit of a knack in it as well, like, you know. But was, you know you was going hunting in the in the moonlight, after rabbits anyhow. <laughs> and who bought the rabbits off this? There was a market in Buntlody and uh, of a Saturday, there was buyers in Buntlody always. And again, it was them dobs that used to be in it. And I think it was Quinn's. But you'd go on with your rabbits on the handlebar of the bike. You'd hang him and go on in with, with your rabbits and sell him. And um, my father used to have a lot of them. So they used to call out to him with a van to come maybe one day a week, maybe a Wednesday. And he'd have all these rabbits for him. Could have a couple of hundred rabbits, you know, sometimes. And would you gut him or skin him? Oh, yeah, all had to be good. You'd go and leg him. You know, they used to put one leg into the other for to hang him. And um, they'd be all good. That was a big job. You'd sell him up in Bunclody in the market in Bunclody. Yeah. And so where, were they, where, where did the rabbit meat go? To Dublin? Or? Oh, I'd say it went to England that time. Don't forget that it was after the war. And me was scarce and they were buying rabbits in England and they were buying rabbits in the butchers. You get him in Dublin as well. I don't know, but I do know that Dobbs used to buy him and, uh, and bought a lot of them. And there was, everyone had rabbits that time, catching rabbits, till the mixed matosis came. But, uh, when did Mixo come again? Oh, gee, I don't know what the year that came. I, I'd say that was into, I'd say it was around 55 or that. I don't know now. I'd say it was back around that time. I'd, I'd say it was around 55. Now, I wouldn't be sure of that at all, but it was around them years. And that just wiped out the whole industry? The, that finished the rabbits. You wouldn't, if you saw them mix them with horse and rabbits, they were dead on the road every place. And they were going around the rice all swelled up and they were stupid and that. But you wouldn't eat rabbits, so that, that finished the rabbits. And did mix all come here? Did it, did it, did it, it was every place, all over Ireland. And what happened was, a lot of places that they hadn't mix all, the guy, because the rabbits, was, there was a plague of rabbits, they were eating the corn, eating it, and the farmer spread it. So any place it wasn't, it nearly got every place. I'm not saying it was up here, well it came every place, because um, they all got infected. Because I think they said they used to get it, pick it up in the in the burrows, like, you know, for the for the burrows, the, the mixing with horse and rabbits was and everything like that. Did you ever hear the old people saying they were catching crows during the war and, and sending them to England? No. But I remember the, the wood quest, or the wood pigeon, but the wood quest, I can remember them at home, going out shooting them. And uh, they had a torch, a big torch, mounted on a double barrel shotgun. And they spotted, and then they had a um, 2B1 slate and lats, and they used to nail them, and they could pull them out. You know, they'd have to carry them around with them, and they could open them out. Because when they shoot quest, some of them would stay caught on the branch and they had a hook on this and they'd pull it up and pull them down. I remember being out a couple of nights with them and that was shooting the quest that time as well. For, for food? Yeah, so they were selling them that time. So it must have been going to, it was for food. They, you, you could, I don't know how much the wood quest was. Wood pigeons anyhow. But um, they did shoot them that time. And that was, uh, I was about, 10 or 12, I remember that time when they used to be attacked. But that was all after the war. There was nothing that time after the war. You were telling me the other day that you said up on the hills here behind you, there's famine beds, potato beds. Yes, well, there's, there are ridges. And they, they had them the time of the famine. And a lot of the people went up. They were evicted and everything. And they went up and lived up on the side of the mountains. Now, I don't know what sort of potatoes would be animal around like that without manure, but the, the ridges there, you can see the ridges over under the rock in Tullon there. Well, they're up there. To, if there was no ferns in that now, in the winter, you can see the ridges. They're getting flattened out a bit now, but they were good back, we'd say, 60 years ago. They were pretty, you could see them pretty good, you know. And that was a... There was a lot of people evicted, and they, and they had no place to go, only up, up to the mountain. So the people who were evicted here in Wexford went up to the mountain to... And, and they went to the good parts of the mountain, like, you know. There was some of where there wasn't too much rock in that. The part I'm talking about now, there's not that much rock. There would be a turf in it. 
and they were able to t uh, dig a hope, I suppose, and turn the sod in it, and that's what they used. So I don't know any, that's what my father told me, that that was what the, they were the farm for the farm, and they used to throw spuds in that in them. But I, I'd say that's back a uh, couple of hundred years ago, maybe. Yeah. And what, what year was your father born, can you remember? He was born 1905. Yeah. So you're talking 1845? He'd he, 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 he be 100, or he'd be now 114 or that, or 114, yeah. So it's not that long ago when you think back the famine was only 1845 to 1848, yeah. say. Yeah. So it's not, it's not that, it's only... I suppose that's how they were good that time, maybe, yeah. And, so and my grandmother, you see, she was before, like, not a back, back in the 1800s, so she would have they would have been fairly good at that stage. And he told you that those houses, there were there were people from the famine who set up a house there, a home there. Yeah, they, 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 they were evicted in that, and the, they had all huts and that up, up on the mountain. That's all they had was the sort of huts. What was, can you remember any of their names, any of their surnames? No, I, I don't remember any of them, no. Were they gone when you were a child? Oh, they were, yeah, oh, they were all gone. I, I don't remember any of them huts or that on a hair, but the, there's a couple of old stone walls up on them, I don't know what they were. They might have been something to do with uh, shooting when the, they're after the grouse. That time as well there was grouse on the mountain. There was a lot of grouse on these mountains that time that we were picking the falcons, and that used to start the 12th of August. The, the shooting, because we used to picking the falcons now in August, the 12th of August, I remember because we used to be sort of afraid when the people, you hear shots going off. There was a lot of people on the mountains that time after the grouse. And there's very few grouse on it now. There's a few on a hard right, but very few. But that time there was hundreds of them on it. And the 12th of August, they were all, all up shooting. And out along the lodge, out along the curry, up stooly in there and that. And there was a, it'd be a lot of people shooting the, the 12th of August. And who, what kind of people would they be? Would it be local country lads or towns? Well, those people came from the towns. And a lot of them was local. But there was a, a lot of them that came from the towns, like, you know, that was in gun clubs and that. Uh, it, was, it was supposed to be in a gun club for that. It was all game keeping, anyhow. It was all game shooting. But uh, I know retired people. And I knew, I knew people, they had cars, you know. I remember the car, one of the cars was a Hillman Minx car that was coming up. So that was later on, years you know. But uh, there was a lot of shooting at that time. And uh, they had good dogs and that for to raise them up. And if you were walking the mountain there now, you know, and just the grouse might up really quick in front of you. They were very fast board. And, uh, but there was a lot of them on the mountains, and it's a shame they're, they're gone now. They tried bringing them back here, back a few years ago. They had a few hatcheries and places um, to preserve them, but I don't know whether they worked out or not. You know, they had eggs and tried to hatch them out here. So I think the foxes might have got them, you know. So when you were little lads out picking the frockings, and you hear these shots going off and it'd be... Oh, so we'd be picking the frockings, there was plenty of people after the 12th of, 12th of August. Yeah. So that's how... I know that the, the frockings went on into August because we used to be picking them when the at the twelfth of August we would be picking frockings. What was what was the date, Jim? You were saying it was a frocking Sunday. That was done in a different the, part of the hill. Wasn't the, it? That was the last Sunday in July, and that was but that was out over at Newer. It's up over near Cahiroos then, and it's between the Black Stairs Mountain and the White Mountains. There's a flat spot up there and they call it the meeting point. And uh, they came up from Wexford there and they sort of partied and, you know, had a, a good time and that. And they came up from Carlo at the other side. I think it's up from Goulin, I think is where they came up from. But uh, that was the last Sunday in July that, that, that ha they had that Sunday. Now, I don't know. That's gone, I think, now. I, I don't know if anyone come up there now. But that's... That's years ago, but over at Newer now, they used to come up from that and Carlo. But that's us and the far side of the Black Stairs. 
I'd be on the new Ross side of Black Stairs, you know. For Frock and Sunday? Yeah. And I don't know if it was Frock and Sunday or not. I, it probably was. It, it, it might have been Frock and Sunday. I, I only heard tell of it was the, the meeting, or Patron Sunday, I think they used to call it. Patron Sunday? I think that's what they used to call it as well, yeah. They were supposed to meet and say prayers there and that. Now I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> that's what they said anyhow. But I was never at that now. I was never up there. I was up there all right, but I was never up there that Sunday. Now it's interesting you say that, because where I grew up in Ballygarrett and Dunhamore, we have Patron Sunday on the same last Sunday in July. And we'd always have to have, well the older people used to have a feed of new, new potatoes that day. Yeah. There'd always be a bit of an old gathering of people on the Patron Green, to call it, in Dunamore. Yeah. Same, tied in with the... It's probably the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and did you ever hear it called Mountain Sunday? Well, that was called Mountain Sunday as well. Mm. They did call that Mountain Sunday as well. That was another name was on it, like, yeah. Mountain Sunday. And that was the last Sunday in July, up there. So the, that's what they did call it, Mountain Sunday, up at the meeting, mm. Mountain Sunday. So they came from Wexford and came from Carlow and they met there. <laughs> <laughs> I better let you go. You're going to pick a few frockings, are you? I, I don't think I'll pick a whole lot more, but I've got enough of them when I was young. <laughs> but there's, there's not much here now, but there's, there's a few in it, like, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, have a, I don't know what I'd do with them if I had the money. <laughs> Unless you go up to Sleeve Garda now, well, I'm beating the Yeah, well, up Sleeve Garda now, there's probably, they're better than here, like, but it's all right or here as well, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, if you, a little bit early for them yet, yeah. but now, in the middle of August now, it should be good, yeah, but I won't be here for them. <laughs>